Ben, yes. just real quick, you know, I, I, I talked about finding out about the, all of those sort of hidden audibles in Madden. And we talked about that last week a little bit. Um, and uh, again, I was doing it because I wanted to just, you know, I'm playing at, at the Madden level. I'm playing at the highest level. I'm playing on the most competitive setup. And if I decided to actually compete live, I wanted to be, be able to comply. You know what I mean? With the way their set it, setup was. So my, um, um, what do they call it? My, my made up, uh, I never forget, remember the name of it, um, playbook, I can't use. So I have to take whoever playbook I'm going to run with, simply do audibles. And I was losing last week. You know, I can imagine what it's like in, preseason for for new you know running a new scheme you know trying to find out whose strengths is what um actually i found a couple new receivers i'm gonna uh we'll talk about some of the people that i've found i want to make sure they're actually still on the roster because they don't update their rosters that quickly on madden uh, at this particular time so long story short um found how to do a rotation in in my uh in my formations and my audibles, and man, makes all the difference in the world, you know, when you're able to uh, to walk up to the line of scrimmage and, and make the necessary changes and put the uh, the defense in a bad situation, you know what I mean, where you got mm -hmm. leverage to one side or something like that because you know your offense. And the thing that I want to mention that comes out of this, because in Madden, again, you you know, you're controlling the, the – you're the coach – you're calling the play. You're also the quarterback. So you're, you're everything, you know, and, to, and snapping the ball until the ball leaves your hand. As we move into this upper echelon of, of salary for quarterbacks, do, are, are, are we more and more getting to the point where a quarterback should be able to call his own plays? What do you think about that? That's an interesting question that right now I would say we would, we should probably hold on to for a longer and more in-depth discussion at a later date, because I, I do in fact have some thoughts about that, but the trend seems to be moving away from that. And Peyton Manning and maybe a Drew Brees or an Aaron Rodgers who don't 100% call their own plays. Peyton Manning's probably the last one that I can think of that pretty much had total autonomy as far as play calling is concerned. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see that. I don't see I'll tell you. I'll tell you real fast why I don't see it. I look at college football, okay? And a lot of these college systems, whether they run a pro system or uh, – whatever they run, they almost 100% get the calls from the sideline on top of hand signals, headset, guys holding up cards, all kinds of stuff. So the, the pressure of, or the perceived pressure of calling your own stuff has been totally taken away from them. Probably even at the high school level, I would assume. Well, and I think that's a fair assumption considering that's when guys are really getting their, their best football education as they move along with their careers. So no, I don't, I don't see it. You know, you said something and it sparked a thought in my mind, uh, which actually boosts your argument and it ties into what we're going to finish with after you do your mock draft segment. Um, we're going to finish up women's month. Um, talking about a young lady who is in the research and analysis section, because, you know, we know now that's how much that's, how much that's bringing, but we also know that there's a lot of, uh, uh, what are they calling it now? Analytics. Absolutely. That's being brought, you know, to play calling. Right. So if, if you're, if you're a, a quarterback, and the analytics say, do this, you know, as opposed to a quarterback walking up and looking at that line of scrimmage and going, oh, you know, 
if we let's make a little change here you know what i mean and because we have a match up here that i can take full advantage of and you don't know that necessarily oh, uh, see now that's why i said we we should we should table this for a further discussion because what you're saying right now, I think, is more uh, what's going on with Major League Baseball, where analytics come into play with each individual player against the skills of each individual player in each individual situation. And what inning is it? What's, what's the score? This guy hits to the left. This guy hits to the right. This guy throws curveballs. This Okay, that's it's a little bit more fine tuned analytically there. Whereas in football, while the game is going on, it's pretty much this is what they're showing me. This is what I want to do against that. It doesn't have to be analytical. It's it's this is what we do best. And this is what we practice against if we see this or that. Okay, the analytical part comes in uh, right off the top of my head real fast. The two-point conversion, when to use it, when not to use it. There, there's specific written down situations where they say, do not go for two points here. Yes, you must go for two points here. You can go for two points if this is the situation or that is the situation. That's the type of analytics that go on in football. That's a good point. That's a good point. And we will table this because um, next week – uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about there's actually a, a competition that the NFL is involved in, uh, which has to do with analytics. <laughs> so people are providing analytic. Uh, um, what would you call it uh, where you give, you know, something or, or you s submit analytic submissions uh, for competition now. So they're actually uh, a really um, trying to get that going. All right, so we're gonna bring that up next week.